How you doing everybody? It's your health and fitness specialist Kelly Brown. And today's video topic is gonna to be how do you build a lagging body part? And so today I'm gonna to be a little bit vulnerable and I'm gonna show you parts of my body that I've been kind of building on and you can compare it to my last videos and see where I've you know, made improvements to where I haven't made improvements and see where struggle is. But um, I will let you know that I have been working out consistently. I haven't taken off anything like that. And I've been trying to grow lagging body parts, specifically my legs, but we'll get into the details on what I've learned and the problems I've been running into and stuff like that. So I want to give you some of the advice that another guy who was a bodybuilder shared with me. And this probably was the best piece of advice that I've had on the journey to grow my legs. Now, although my legs aren't my best body part right now, my goal is to make them my best body part, right? He told me, you gotta fall in love with doing your legs. And that was something that resonated with me, but I knew I wasn't ready for it just yet. But it makes sense because the body part that you love the most, you're gonna do it the most. The body part that you can't stand the most, you're gonna do it the least. And so if you start actually falling in love with that lagging body part that you can't stand working on, if it just doesn't grow, you know, you have to really start attacking it and love it the way you love chest day or the way you love back day or bicep day, you know. Fall in love with working that muscle. That's the best piece of advice that somebody gave me about my body and that's the best piece of advice I can give you about your body. First thing I'm gonna do is run through a couple mandatories, mandatory poses, so that you can kind of see what my frame is looking like right now. Shout out to Fruit of the Loom. These Fruit of the Loom? Hanes? Fruit of the Loom? Shout out to Fruit of the Loom. <laughs> I don't wear no Hanes draws. They, they just don't work it for me. You know? Okay, cool. So. Side chest, you kind of see my leg a little bit too. You know what I'm saying? My back. Anyway, the main key we're working on are these yams right here. And um, this is where I've been struggling the most with my legs, you know. So, okay, we got some, I've been putting in some work to them, and I've been, I've been working on them religiously. But, let's say this, the problem is, is that legs are my weak point. In addition, my forearms are probably weak, and what I've been noticing is that my triceps are also weak, okay? So, let's break into factors of what I've been doing, where the struggle is, and my review of how to actually build a lagging body part. So, first I'm gonna put my pants back on. <laughs> and um, I've written down some key points, just so I don't forget. All right, first thing is, in order to grow a lagging body part, you have to work that body part often. And what I've been doing with my legs is working them out hard, like once a week, or let me not say once a week, I've been working them out hard on one day, and I do exercises that I know are gonna get me sore, so keep that in mind. When I say working hard, I'm talking about doing stuff that you know is gonna get you sore, guaranteed to get you sore. And I've been getting them real sore. My quads took a long time for me to find exercises that got them sore. But just this past year, I finally found like the right combination of exercises that get me sore in my quads. And that's probably why they hadn't been growing before because I was working them, but I couldn't feel nothing afterwards. 
Whereas on my other muscles, I would work them and then I would be like super sore days on like two, three, four, five, six days at a time. Now my quads are finally doing that. So I feel like really I'm just working them right for the first year, you know? And um, what I've noticed is as soon as they're not sore, as soon as they recover, I need to go right back in there and do them again. Okay, so working your muscles often. That's the first point, all right? The, of the lagging body part. You gotta work it often, work it efficiently often. Get it sore one day, as soon as it's not sore, come back in and get it sore again. All right, the second key is you have to work it super hard. So when I say efficiently, let's dig into that a little bit more. Make sure you do exercises that get you sore. And when you do the second day, do the same thing, let them get you sore. So you really are realistically gonna be in a perpetual state of being sore in that body part. So if it's, you know, you got weak biceps, you gotta work your biceps until they get, you know, with exercise that you know are gonna have you sore for two, three, four days. And as soon as those two, three, four days are up, do them again. So pick the right combination of exercises because that's gonna be a key. The third thing is you gotta use different angles as well. So just like with a bicep or with a shoulder or with legs, for me, with legs, you gotta do different exercises. I've noticed that leg presses are good for me, um, leg curls are good for me, but I change the variation on the leg curls. I change the variations on the leg presses. I change the variations on my, my lunges. I change the variations on my calf raises, all that stuff. You gotta change the variations of your foot placement and all these different keys and, and the way you're pressing, if you're pressing with your heel versus pressing with the outside of your foot versus pressing with the balls of your feet. All of that stuff comes to play when it's talking about um, variations. The next thing is you gotta eat big on the day before you work out that leg and body part and the day of all day long to the bottom. So from breakfast to dinner. Breakfast to dinner the day before, you go get ready to go work your, your shoulders and your triceps and that same full day of that you're gonna work those body parts. Now, if it's something lagging area like your abs, you don't wanna be working those things. You don't wanna be eating big the day before and the day after or the day of for your abs. You probably wanna eat light that day, you know, so that you can give that, that muscle more of a, a chance to stretch and do what it needs to do and have less calories. But you want more calories to be in your shoulders and your back and your triceps and stuff like that, your legs, because you want those things to grow. You don't necessarily want your abs to grow. You just want them to start being more defined and you want, to be, you want them to be visible. So make sure that you work, you're eating big the day before and the day of. And the last thing is you want to make sure that you stretch out that muscle. So remember to stretch it efficiently with different angles as well. Get it to the point where it feels loose. In the beginning of the workout, try and do dynamic stretches, which are things where it's like fast motions or let's say kicks or something like that, or twists, you know, do things like that. At the end of the workout, you can do static stretches, which are stretches where you just hold on to something, stretch it the long way, or you know, reach up, hands above your head or something like that, and keep it like that. Those things are static stretches, so you do those after at the end of the workout. Anyway, hope you guys learned something today, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to download your free ebook. The link is in the description below. I'll see you guys later. Thanks.